What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Hot Games Only. I'm one of your hosts, Ethan, and I'm joined by today, the co-host. It's the co-host with the co-most, Hunter. How's it going, Hunter? Let's oh, have a pun for you. Doing uh, wonderful. Well, Good job. I'm I'm happy that my disease is spreading. <laughs> You love to see it. And I'm also joined by my other co-host. It's the Weeb Wonder himself. Kyle, how's it going? <laughs> <Wonder>. <laughs> nice. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, do you like it? There we go. You know, I'm like, hey, you two are essentially the co-host of this podcast. Do this you write this, do you write this stuff down? Like, you know, No, I literally, I can't. Just think no, about literally, it. I was like, as I was going to get a drink before we started this podcast, I, I came up with the, the stupid joke of co-host with the co-most. It's so stupid. I was like, that'll fit for Hunter. And then as I said it to Hunter, I was like, shit, now I've got to come up with something in the next five <laughs> seconds for Kyle. And I was like, ah, oh, we blunder. It, it, right, it's got the alliteration it'll do, you know? Yeah, I can respect it's, that. Yeah, there you go, dude. So yeah, welcome back to Hot Gamers Only, the show where we talk about the hot topics in games. You can find us on podcast services around the globe and also on YouTube. Uh, for the video version, which is just the audio version with a fancy logo on it. Um, and if you like what we're gameplay. doing. And yeah, some very blurry gameplay behind it. I hope Ooh. you enjoyed that gameplay. What is it this week? Who knows? I don't. <laughs> um, if you enjoy what we're doing, be sure to head on over to podcast services, especially Google Play and iTunes. Give us a five-star rating on that. We'd really appreciate it. We are currently a five-star rated podcast on iTunes, ladies and gentlemen. Well done. Well, Thank you to the five that, like... people that I forced to review the podcast. Really appreciate it. We also learned that like three-fifths of our viewer base comes from iTunes. Yeah, so if you are listening, if you are listening, yeah. That. If you are listening to the uh, podcast live, I wish I had the metrics up now, or else I would tell you how many people did listen. It's more than 10. Um, but if you are one of the people that joined us last week when iTunes did um, get released finally, we, our version did get released on iTunes, welcome, and we hope you enjoy your stay. Uh, you can get in contact with us on Twitter, at the gig is YT. Uh, you can keep up to date with updates there. You can find the YouTube, all the links. Go there. Find our personal uh, Twitters, too. Find our personal Twitters, too. Uh, use the hashtag hot games only if you want to send any comments concerns whatever you want to talk about send them in suggestions oh please we're, we're running wrong. out of stuff and we're only on episode five please <laughs> we Lord. really are we're getting desperate we hit a we hit a dry spell because of <laughs> the whole situation too bad it yeah. happened five episodes yeah. into the show <laughs> Yeah, there's no <laughs> games being released, and the only games that we do have are really long ones, so our spoiler reviews are going to be way off in the distance for those ones. So oh, I'll be done with Final Fantasy by next week. Yeah, oh, yeah, you oh, will. Nice. But we won't be able to do a spoiler cast on it until I've been. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which guess... will be a long, long time away. But um, anyway, so this week, it's going to be a much shorter episode because I feel like we're not going to have much to talk about because it's been a lot of the same. So we're going to go straight to what I assume is going to be the main topic today, which is going to be Hunter carrying on with his Final Fantasy VII impressions. Hunter, have you played more Final Fantasy VII? Indeed I have. I have gotten that's to... the end of the main topic. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, go on. <laughs> I've gotten to chapter 15 out of, I believe, 18, if what I read was correct. So I'm if almost trophies done. mean anything. Yeah. So I'm almost done. Nice. And I've been enjoying it quite a bit. Stuff got real as far as the story is concerned. Cool. Nice. Yeah. How many how many like big changes have there been from um, the original, if any? It's less like straight up changes and more of they've just taken stuff that didn't get fleshed out in the original version and expanded uh. it. I mean, there's certain things that got changed up a little bit, but not in a way that matters so what about, much. What about those Dementors? How are those coming along? Oh, yeah, those things are How's weird. Thing out? Oh, man, there's you occasionally got to fight them, and I don't know, fighting those isn't exactly fun, because I feel like mm. I've just been kind of smacking it until the game goes, okay, that's enough. <laughs> But aside from those and like another like one other boss fight, I've been enjoying most of the combat Ooh. stuff so far. Yeah, that's... that seems to be the one thing that's been hit or miss about this game is some people really like the combat, some people really don't. Um I've seen some strong opinions on Twitter. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Have you gotten yeah. all the party members yet? Um I imagine like I met Eris earlier, like <laughs> back like 
after we finished recording the podcast last week Mm -hmm. is when I met her, basically. I like her a lot more than I did in the original. She didn't vibe with me in the original so much, but Mm -hmm. she's all right here. She seems a lot more lively now. Yeah, which I'll... trying to make people attached to her more. Oh, yeah. Although everyone seems a little bit more lively instead of the cold, dead eyes of the cardboard box people. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You love to see it. Um, yeah. questions, questions, questions. Do you have any questions, Kyle? I've been asking questions, dude. Where yeah, but right. more. I've, we need to, I've got we something. Need to fill. When I got, so I kind of forgot how the materia system worked in the uh, original game because when for I those got of the, the, for those who don't go on, yeah. All right, the materia so system is how you get like your skills and stuff. You equip them, mm-hmm. and you'll get like fire from one, you'll get ice from another, so on and so forth. That's how that works. Okay, I was under the impression that uh, once you maxed out that piece of materia, you'd like master it and then you could unequip it and, you know, just keep using the spells. Like that's how it worked with abilities in nine. And I think the magic mm-hmm. in six, I don't remember exactly. Yes. But um, yeah, so that's not how it works. Basically, what you can do is once you max out a piece of materia, now you don't have to give it to you could give it to someone else and they could just skip the whole process of leveling that piece of materia up. And now like, so it's interesting because I forgot that's how it worked. Mm. Yeah. That doesn't seem fun. Yeah. <laughs> As someone I mean, who's never played FF seven. I mean, it's all right. It didn't bother me once I realized what was going on. Cause <laughs> basically you know the way it's paced out i haven't had to grind at all which is okay. nice because i haven't yeah grinding is something that i don't have the patience for anymore as Same. i grow older <laughs> I, <laughs> might... I hate about rpgs yep. yeah exactly that's why i'm glad that rpgs are becoming a little paced out better as far as lately like when i played persona 5 last year no problems there didn't need to grind yeah. at all final fantasy 7 so far has been pretty smooth sailing and i didn't even need to put it on easy mm, the only one that i could think about that required grinding of a sort from recent memory is xenoblade 2 but that was mainly for skill what they call field skills yeah. kyle you're gonna have to field skills which didn't necessarily impact fighting so no i mean just i probably progression <laughs> Yeah, I probably Stupid. should have grinded an Octopath Traveler, but I found a way to persevere without doing that. Yeah. So, cool. And that was, yeah. it was trying to be more of a classic RPG, anyway. Well, yeah, Octopath is definitely more of a grindy game if you want to hundred percent it. Yeah, but that's a talk for to another day, though. Yeah, probably. <laughs> save it. Save we need it. we need the content. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll save it for when you finally play that game, Ethan. <laughs> That's a funny joke, Kyle. <laughs> it wasn't funny a joke. joke. Come on, man. That's a good game. I own it's it. a really good game. You dude. own it. Yeah, what's stopping you? you? Own it. Uh, Just drop Persona, Persona 5. You've already played it. And go I play Octopus. I, I would never drop Persona 5. Never. Anyway, um, what else was I going to ask about uh how are the performances in terms of the acting and all that because everyone knows that square enix is very much a mixed bag when it comes to its acting talent i can't think of Um, any of them that have been like egregious so far i like what everyone's done as far as uh the voice cast and all that i was a bit bummed when reno wasn't voiced by quentin flynn but the other guy's still doing a good job (laughs) i mean you got you got John DiMaggio in that game. How oh, yes, you do. He's, de- he's crazy Heidegger? little... Yeah, Heidegger. Is that, is that his name? Heidegger is his name. He's the crazy, yeah. like, warmonger person. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so, yeah, John DiMaggio. Um, yeah. yeah. It's good. It's a good... Waka himself. They got Bender. Yeah. They got Bender from Futurama. <laughs> That's exactly what you need. Exactly and what 10,000 other roles he's done. Yeah, he was Just in Final Fantasy yeah. he... Was he? Yeah, yeah, he was Waka, wasn't he? And Kimari. And, and Kimari? Yeah, crazy, oh, right? Damn. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Jeez, that's I didn't crazy. pay attention to Kimari. <laughs> it blew my mind. Kimari was one of my favorites. So. Kimari's the one I forgot about. Ah, uh, you see, Riku's the one I forgot about. 
Yeah. Wait, there's another Square Enix Riku? Yeah, this one's yeah. voiced by Timmy Turner. Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe it's for the best that I know nothing about Final Tara, Fantasy. Tara Strong, that's her name. Yeah, Tara Strong. Um, was, she also does I actually just blanked on Harley what her name Quinn. was. Yeah, she does Harley Quinn for the Batman Harley games Quinn. as well. And she, she did Pony Voices. Moonlight and No More Heroes. She's done a million things. Yeah, another character. Another, another, another person who's done in, in like, everything. Yeah. 20 million voices, yeah. 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 So are you still enjoying it, Hunter? Yeah, I'm still liking it. I'm excited to see how they manage to pull off the rest of it. Mm. Yeah, and you'll just have to come back next week to find out what he thinks. Wow, what a great idea. I feel like it's great that we're having to like push these three releases like that have come <laughs> out, you know, to like extend them to the fucking uh, hell and back because everything's getting delayed. It's like... I feel like we wouldn't be feeling as bad if like we started Last of Us in the near future and stuff like that, but now it's like, oh, let's look to the future, and it's just like nothing. It's yeah. pretty great. Yeah, it's why it's honestly why I've slowed down on Persona a lot. Cause it's like, what's the rush, <laughs> dude? If I finish <laughs> Final milk, Fantasy milk, milk. VII, I've been ha lately. I've been having this urge to play the Silent Hill games again. If I finish this Ooh. game and still want to play them, I'm gonna order two. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. Yeah. You and your horror games, Hunter. You and your horror games. I'm not even like so, that up and up. Someone's got to play them. It's just Resident Evil and like. Someone's got to play them. We've got too many people that play because JRPGs in this podcast group. We just need to like expand. Fortunately, uh, Hunter does both. Yeah, <laughs> I play a little bit of everything. See, everyone cover. Every yeah, we cover everything. You know, we've got the JRPG crowd. I play the normie games. Hunter plays like everything. You know. Everybody is We're gonna... like RTSs. That's a blind spot. Oh, that is, that's just a blind spot. I'm sorry. I, that's that's a blind spot that I don't go, oh, yeah, we really need to fill that. I'm just going <laughs> to whistle and walk away from that yeah. genre entirely. You know, I'm sure that when this game release is actually coming out, it's like, oh, it's going to be great because we got, we'll have so many people that can cover different games. Yeah. But right now, it's just tumbleweed in the desert. I mean, I like my strategy games. I like Final Fantasy, Tactics, and oh, that's true. Fire that's Emblem true. Awakening, but like, it's not something I, I gravitate play, yeah. to. It's, uh, it's, yeah, I guess Fire, uh, Fire Emblem is a bit of a strategy game, but I'm Join not going to lie. If... We talk about Three Houses. Oh. Just kidding. No, we won't. <laughs> no. Someone wants to talk about Fire Emblem Three Houses. <laughs> Someone needs to yet. finish Fire Emblem Three Houses, and it's I finished me. it. No, he's talking me. about himself. No, finish it, Kyle. I didn't it's even get to it. I promise. Here. I'm sure it's worth it in the Is end. Is it? Is it? No. I still I need know. to play it. Awakening you know, is worth playing. My one problem with um, Fire Emblem Three Houses, especially with the path that I picked. For anyone that wants to know which path I picked, I picked. Uh, was it Black Eagles? Yeah, I believe that's the Black name. Black Eagles yeah. Edelgard path is the path I chose for those. AKA the shortest path in the game, <laughs> which I don't know, but I'm kind of grateful that I did <laughs> do that one. Um, and it just kind of ends. Like you can tell that it wasn't the main ending that they were planning. So I was like, it's like, oh, do you want to go play the other playthroughs now? See, I picked Golden Deer, and I think that's like the inconsequential route. <laughs> that's just it's... the group that's kind of there. It's I the mean, one that from doesn't my really fit into one that didn't anything. Exist. Yeah, I just stole people from that group. So I'm like, hey, you're not needed in that group, really. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> Just make They're sure just to steal Lysithia. She's broken. Oh, I did, and she was busted. Dude. Yeah, I did. That was good pick. Good pick. No, I didn't even know. I was just well, like, hey, you're a magic person, and Lintart's a lazy bastard, so let's just <laughs> get you on here. And it's yeah, like, it worked. 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 Anyway, moving on. Kyle, what have you been playing this week? <laughs> yeah, moving on from games we didn't play this week. Um... <laughs> I'm mean, we could go back to games I didn't play this week. <laughs> <laughs> No, go on, Kyle. Oh, yeah, let's week. talk about Okami this week. Oh, it's great. a good game. Everyone play it. Ethan, that means you. It. <laughs> fuck so. I haven't played it either. What the fuck, oh, there we go. Perfect. I'm How sorry, Kyle. I let you down this time. <laughs> 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 Usually he'll say something and I'll be like, yeah, I know it. <laughs> the, normies have been over the normies have overpowered you this time, Kyle. We win this time. <laughs> Bro, no Okami one's got played released Okami. on like, everything. <laughs> Yeah. I, there's so many games like that. It's like Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, you have that as well. Haven't played it. Oh, what's so, like, wrong Rayman with you? Legends. Yeah, I mean, I've I, never hey, played Shadow of the Colossus. Rayman either. Legends. I have played like multiple times. Love Rayman. Anyway, um, Kyle, what have you been playing? Stop, uh, 
<laughs> Stop dodging the question. What have you been playing? It's the most chaotic, evil episode of this podcast. Dude. It's like... You finished DMC3. I did. I finished... Oh, I finished let's talk both... about that. I finished both pads of DMC3, oh, Dante nice. and Virgil. Overall, nice. um, I think I liked Virgil's path better, but I don't know if that's just because I understood how the game worked. That might be it. Also, Virgil... Um... So now I didn't have the Switch hell. version. I always just had the uh, kind of two where I could only take two of each weapon with me. Virgil's loadout flowed a lot better since you could just kind of go left or right and switch between whatever you needed to have at the time. Yeah, it was cool because uh, he had all three of his weapons with him. He had like the single katana, the dual sword, and then the Beowulf. Beowulf, yeah. The Beowulf Knuckles? Dude, that shit is awesome. His version of that weapon is so much better than Dante's, too. I love the Knuckles. Yeah. Gauntlet weapons are a staple of the series. It's great. Dude, it's great. Yeah, cleared out both those pads on normal, because I didn't feel like bashing my head against hard. Oh, yeah. Um, Howard? Eh. The normal felt pretty hard to me, to be fair. Yeah. I don't blame you. Um, man, other than that, like, it's DMC. It's DMC3. It's great. Play mm. it if you haven't. A I lot concur. of good shit. No. What was your favorite boss good... fight? My favorite boss fight? I'm gonna be unoriginal and say Final Virgil. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that's, such, that's too good of a fight. It's my favorite fight in the series. I other love than it. that, I'd probably give it to Agni and Rudra. They are really good too. That's just such a really it's such a well done fight. Yeah. Usually all, all usually the different hate, ways you can do it. Usually I hate group fights, but that's one it's done so well. Like Yeah. And it's so creative how there's so many different ways to actually win the fight. Yeah. Um and then after after DMC three, I went back to Persona four. <gasps> <laughs> Thank you for that forced gasp, Ethan. <laughs> I also do laughs and applause. Oh, baby. <laughs> the one-man anyway, sound Karen. crew. Um, yeah, dude. yeah, I went back to Persona 4 because no real reason. That's just a game that... That's just a good, feel-good game. Not for the main story, but for the surrounding characters. The main story is about solving a murder mystery. That's not I always hate good. saying that. I'm the exact same with P5. I hate saying that it's a feel-good game because the, the subject matter of the yeah. Persona franchise is not something that should be feel-good. No. But you still... It, it's in, I guess in terms of gameplay, it's comfort food, in but a just way. Like, yeah. For me, it's, the, it's definitely the locations and characters that make the game comfy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, even the music in Persona 4, like, I I don't remember if it was the title music, but it felt like it was trying to be very nostalgic, mm -hmm. even though I hadn't played it yet when I first yeah. heard it. That's that's really how I feel about P4. It's just a game that makes me feel so nostalgic, and I think it's pro I think it ultimately just boils down to how the game presents itself. Basically, your protagonist is from a big city, and he moves into a really small town. So Wait, the opposite of P5. Like, yeah, yeah, basically. But that one, I think that's probably why P4 hit me harder than P5 did and why it resonated with me more was because I grew up in a small town where there's not really a lot to do. So it, just seeing something <laughs> like that, it it was nice to see that represented. I don't know. P4, it's just nostalgia is like the perfect word to describe that game for me. Mm. sometimes like i'll just sit around the uh, dojima's house just listening to signs of love and oh, just, nice it's a good song so good walking around i played the dancing heartbreak. games i know that song <laughs> I, I, I played the My dancing God. games i know that game i know that song but I'm all right they put dojima's house music in the dancing game <laughs> That's a fucking dead hunter. okay uh, yeah, yeah, but well, they don't put fucking whims of fate in the Persona 5 version. Of course they don't. Like, of course they don't. It's in the DLC. Of course uh, it is. As for, like, no, um... as for like where I am in the game, I just got Rise on my team. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's a fun dungeon. Nice. Do love the strip club. <laughs> so I assume that um, the dungeons are random, aren't they, in P4? 
Is yeah. that how it works? Yeah. So it's not, it's not like P5. From like, aside from like a few set floors where there's bosses, it's a roguelike dungeon. Interesting. And do you prefer that style to P5's set in stone? Same um, every time? or I do and don't. I like that it's fresh on every playthrough, but also I've had a lot of times where I got ambushed and just murdered. So, oh yeah, that game will hit you hard if you're not yeah, ready for game, it. That game is pretty freaking brutal. Like, I had to grind out levels every time I got to a boss fight. Yeah, same. Bit. I had to grind out. I had to do a lot of grinding before Shadow Kanji. Oh man, just because that fight is rough. You got three enemies mm. to go against, and you're pretty much forced to take down the other two before you can get to the main guy. Oh, uh, yeah. Because there's Cause one... that's, that's, my, that's like my one thing is the thing that's like, I would have started playing P4 like straight away after finishing P5. Oh, you would have been so burned out if you did that. Well, I would oh, have, yeah. yeah, obviously. One, I would have been extremely burnt out because for those of you who are unaware, not only did I do my obviously 90 hour playthrough of Persona 5, I then did a further 70 hour playthrough to go and get the platinum as well. So I literally played like 160 odd hours of Persona 5 mm -hmm. the first time around. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wouldn't get burnt out. But that's the one thing that puts me off is because the one thing I really like about um, the Persona 5 palaces is the fact that they are structured. And that there's been thought into this design, except for fucking Akumara. We don't talk about Akumara. There was no thought put into that palace. <laughs> but for the other seven palaces, in fact, you know what? I'm just going to throw it out there. For the other eight palaces, I even bet the new one is better oh, designed than Akumara. Oh, shit. But, you know, like, it's just, that's the one thing that puts me off is it being like, because Mementos is my least favorite part of Persona 5. I think it's everyone's least favorite part of Persona 5 is Mementos, but, you know, yep. it's like. It didn't bother me, honestly. No, I didn't hate it, but it was nothing interesting. It was like I think if you the way that the Persona Five palaces were set up, yeah, it's just like you had it was like set PC. It was like oh, so for example, in I've just done Thingy's Kaneshiro's palace again. <laughs> That's his name, Thingy's palace, <laughs> Thingy's palace. So I've just done Thingy's palace, and um, obviously his is a Bankai's. Um, Got it right this time. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't do the bank cast last week, did I, guys? I did it this week. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I've just done that, and there's obviously a very structured approach to that kind of palace. Yeah. As you go down and down, and it's like, I like that, but then there's the part with Persona 4 where it's like, oh, it's. There's, obviously, there's a set theme of where you're in. Like, obviously, there's a theme to it. But mm. the randomness to me kind of just throws me off to be like, oh, I don't know if I'll enjoy it as much. But hey, we'll find out. Yeah. You know? I, I've already said to Cal, Cal's going to hate when I play P4. Oh, I am, yeah. Because, and I mean, it's not the game's fault. It's not It's not even P5's fault. It's like, if I had played P5, I, I've been meaning, when I eventually do return to YouTube, this is the video that I will make, is about P5. Is just because it's not even the game itself. The reason the game's my favorite game of all time isn't the game itself. It's playing that game at that particular point in my life. Absolutely. It was at that extreme point for those of you who are unaware i was in my final year of college i just i was extremely depressed i was extremely tired and burnt out of just life in general and then that game just came along right to the end of my third year i just finished i'd essentially finished and that's the first thing i did mm -hmm. and i think it's connecting to the character and it's connecting to the story and just having that game at that time that will always be nostalgic like it will be nostalgic for me mm -hmm. that game will all it's nostalgic now you know oh, i feel that I feel that same so it, way about P4. Like, it just yeah. came to me at the right time. Exactly. And it's like when people... It's like when you say, oh, I like P4 more than P5. I'm like, so of course. It's like they're both great great games. Yeah. I know that. It's just you're obviously going to have a certain attachment to that game, whether you like it or not, in a way. Yeah. So it's always going to be funny. It's like even... It's like when Xenoblade comes out later this year, it's like even if Xenoblade 1 is better than Xenoblade 2... Mm -hmm. In every single way, there'll still be a part of me that'll be like, yeah, but I like Xenoblade 2 more just because of the time and place that I played it. Yeah. And just where it was in my life. So it's going to be interesting going to um, play P4 eventually. I'll mm -hmm. get to it. 
Dude, I'm so and looking I think, forward to it. <laughs> it'll be, I think, because we've, because you two have both played it. Yeah. So yeah. I think it'll be great to do a podcast when I have played it, which will be a big spoiler cast where we'll talk about everything. We'll go in depth about it. Kind, kind of mean. like a retrospective. In a yeah, way. kind of a retrospective kind of spoilers, no holds barred kind of. Oh man, when you start playing it, I'll play it again if there's nothing else out because you know what <laughs> well, else am I gonna be. do? Trust me, that won't be. <laughs> so yeah that'll be uh, fun i'm looking forward to it did you have anything else to say about p4 kyle before um yeah know? i guess i'll just tack on that um i've already done one playthrough of p4 but there's in p4 there are different social links that branch off there's two that branch off like you okay, can interesting. basically choose which character you want to have a social link with oh, so right. like oh that's interesting one of them doesn't really matter it's the sports stars either you either pick basketball or soccer but they're friends so you're kind of yeah. they overlap isn't the other, other one just always going to so be in useless. the orbit anyway yeah it I doesn't matter which sport you pick you're basically overlapping them but then there's also um picking which performance art you want to join either theater or uh band on my first playthrough, I had gone with theater because I was a theater kid in high school, and that was what was familiar to Word me. Wheel. <laughs> uh, no. Poggers. How about you, Hunter? I mean, I technically wasn't even a theater. I wasn't even like a theater kid in school. I didn't do theater in school. I went out of my way because the UK education system doesn't really like theater. Oh, damn. No, yeah. Don't worry, neither did my school. They favored sports. That's <laughs> nice. beside the point. That's a <laughs> anyway, for another that's a tangent. day. Yeah. That's a tangent for not this podcast, but um, yeah, on this hot theater <laughs> schools only, <laughs> hot well, theater nerds only, it's our it's new off branch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, so on this new playthrough, I've gone to the to the band, and there's zero overlap with theater, and it's really cool to just see, even after your ninety hour playthrough there's still a whole nother part of the game that I just missed because that that's where the game split. So mm. it's interesting. I don't think I like this, the band social link more than the, more than the theater social link, but yeah, eh, we'll see how, how it many, pans how out. How many confidants are there in Persona 4? I want to say like 18 or 20. I think it's 18. It's, it sounds about right, because in Persona 5, it's 21, and then it's 23 in Royal. Yeah. So, that sounds about right. And I know Golden, like, that's, that's Golden cool. added in two more. Oh. Yeah. That's yeah. my one problem with the... We'll talk about it later. <laughs> in a second. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. So, is there anything else? Um, or are we good? Uh, Kanji's overpowered. Use him <laughs> all the time. I ignored him on my first playthrough. Don't do that. Don't, He's don't great. Do don't underestimate the power of Troy Baker, dude. Don't underestimate Basically. Troy Baker. He won't yeah, bash yeah. you with his chair. He'll slap you silly, dude. He will slap you silly. He uses a fucking chair as a weapon. It's great. I love the weapons in those in that game. Wait. It's great. I, I know. <laughs> All right, I think that's I that's P four done. Cool. All right, let's move on to P five then. Well, who <laughs> Persona cast? Woo. Um, <laughs> Welcome um, to anime cast. Welcome to Anime Cast, where we just talk about weird shit for an like, hour every week. Yeah, it's going to be great. No, no. It, yeah. Show you think we're perform. joking. The next big release is Xenoblade, so have fun, <laughs> weebs. Welcome, come on in. That's when I take over the podcast. Yeah. Oh, I, I think that's going to be extremely interesting, because you'll obviously be have the... You'll have the prior experience where I'm going into that blind completely. So Dude, I'm, be still really debate, I'm still debating on whether or not I want to play the main game again or just go right to Future Connected. Because <laughs> that's I mean, going to be available right from the start. It is, but then the real move would to be play through the whole of Xenoblade 1, then Future Connected, and then just go straight back into Xenoblade 2 dude, and do all of that and then do Torna. <laughs> no, and then dude, there you go. Then you go Torna and then Xenoblade 2. <laughs> I mean, and yeah, then all the way main. back to Xeno Gears. Oh, baby. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you could pause play that game for another 60 hours. <laughs> no, boy. I'll read oh, boy. that book again. Uh. <laughs> but anyway, back to Persona 5. Uh, Royal, it's the special version, I swear. Um, I played more of Persona 5 Royal. I haven't played as much as I wanted to this week because I keep getting distracted. Because, if you didn't know, the UK's in quarantine right now. So I'm constantly stuck with my parents. 
and in the day i don't really like playing games in the day because everyone's in and out of everywhere and it's like uh, i'm not gonna have an hour to myself and at night everyone wants to talk so you know that's the problem having friends i guess Woo. but um i've been playing well, a bit I didn't... <laughs> we're here to make your life worse exactly you're getting in the way of my persona 5 <laughs> damn it we're um, taking you yeah. away from your fake friends yeah i have played more i played palace 3 palace 3 is essentially the exact same as it had was oh baby least changes which i'm fine with palace 3 was more, probably one of my favorites anyway so yeah i'm fine with that i mean it was a good they changed dungeon. gave you the best they changed the member. boss fight yeah they changed you the they changed the boss fight because everyone knew that Shadow Kaneshiro was forgettable, awful, super Absolutely easy. Awful. Him and Akuma are just no. I can't wait to get to Akuma and just find it's the same. So I just get to shit on it all week. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> going back to uh, the Kaneshiro, they did change it. So for, so now the two phases used to be him outside of Piggytron, and then he got into Piggytron, and then that was it. That was the entire boss fight. Now he just goes into Piggy Tr- Piggytron straight away. So you have to beat Piggytron straight away. Then he comes out of it and he has this new mechanic where he has two other enemies with him. One of them is a bodyguard, and the other one is like a sh- like an armed officer, like gunman kind of thing. So the armed officer does like a crap ton of damage to you. Uh, and you can't attack Kanashiro because his bodyguard uh, is in the way and he has an absolute crap ton of health. So you, you've got to try and balance sleeping the bodyguard, dealing with the shooter, and hitting Kanashiro. It's a lot. Be- it's a much better boss fight. That's the one thing I can say is it's an actual decent boss fight now. They are turning them, my least favorite boss fights, which were this one. Uh, I don't know about the Kumari yet. <laughs> and Madarami in particular. I hated Madarami. Um, they're making them a lot more. They're making them a lot better. They're making them a lot more interesting for the most part i'd say that for kanashiro he's not easier but the other two i'd say they are slightly easier but it's more of a it's an exchange of less difficulty but better designed they're a lot less one note than they were in yeah, the a lot less clunky and a lot yeah more po- like they're a lot more polished as a boss fight and kanashiro said... could have done with a boost in difficulty anyway yeah he's definitely more challenging but he's still an easy boss fight mm-hmm. in my opinion <laughs> but they did a lot more with it than I thought they would. In terms of the actual story, there are bits and pieces. My one thing that I've said a lot on Twitter is, my god, Akechi just keeps showing up, dude. Like, Akechi has gone from a character that you barely see until Palace 5, really. Early Palace 6. Like, until he's... I, this is like, oh, it's my time for plot now. All you ever see him is on the TV, really, and he comes up to you on the subway sometimes. He's like, sup, let me ask you a really suspicious question, and you can give me a really suspicious answer. And then we'll part ways. Now, he literally is just like, hey, do you want to play darts all the time? And I'm like, leave me alone. <laughs> He's trying to uh, catch you off guard. Yeah. And then there's this new... <laughs> and then there's this new... And the new girl, Kasumi. Kasumi come, like, is starts talking to you again and then Akechi shows up and he's like oh let's all go to dinner I'm like Akechi stop please <laughs> stop cock blocking me bro <laughs> not even cock block it's just it's so weird where he's like oh yeah her dad owns the TV station so they know each other and he's like oh, oh why do you know it's like oh TV trip mm. uh, another interesting thing which I think is really good I saw it coming but um, I think a uh, nice little twist on it I said at the start that she wasn't a part of the Phantom Thieves uh, when Akechi poses the same question to her about what do you think of the Phantom Thieves, she doesn't like the Phantom Thieves, which I think is an interesting spin on it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, she doesn't like them. She's kind of a mid-ground. She isn't an Akechi. She doesn't, like, jail them, but she's like, eh, I don't see this lasting long. I don't see the... It's just, but for how long is this going to actually be? It's not realistic for everyone to have a change of heart by the Phantom Thieves and stuff like that. And I'm like, it's interesting. I like it. I like where they're going with the new characters. How dare you, no um, believer? <laughs> the counselor is also interesting <laughs> maruki is his name still interesting he's so the fucking bad guy big i know sus. it big sus dude ever since november i've been like you're big sus indeed you're big sus and he's like oh but what if we could change people what if we can't what if we just use change people's hearts to change their emotions why don't we use it to make them happy and i'm like that sounds suspicious it sounds like he's going to be one of those people where he's like, I'm trying to do the good thing, but he just goes way too over the other end of it. Yeah. Little do we know, not only is he into yeah. counseling, but also hypnotherapy. 
Yeah, that's what I, basically that's what he's talking about. He's basically like, oh, what if we can force people to be happy in a way? And I'm like, I don't know about that one, Chief. Like, <laughs> we'll find out. But the big thing that I'm starting to see with Royal is there are so many confidants in that game. There's so many. Mm-hmm. And it's getting to the point where they've, in my opinion, they've nailed the social stat system in this game. Social stats are no longer a fl- like a flawed system where you're like, oh shit, I need level five knowledge now, so I've got to go and piss about for two months. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> literally for two months. <laughs> Honestly, the little change is like being able to see how far you've gone through, how far you are through that social stat level. Being able to at the end of palace days, and most importantly, at the end of these, you have these big like two week periods where every day you've got a story cut scene, and you just go to bed. Now you can actually do social stats in those times. It's just made Suck it so much Donna. easier. Yeah, to the point where I am in July, so I'm only technically like three and a half months in, and I already have knowledge level four, and the rest of them are level three close to level four. Nice. And I've not even had to worry about it. It's great. (laughs) But then then you get to the problem of how many confidants is too many confidants? Never. Yeah, because there are so many in that game, and it's like, it's trying to throw everything one everywhere and it's like everyone comes into it a lot earlier in this game obviously the, you have the two extra confidants now which require your time it's kind of per- they're like they're kind of nudging you they're like oh you can spend time with them no really spend time with them <laughs> same <laughs> with akechi and where it's like oh look akechi's cool maybe you can learn something from him no seriously hang out with him the story demands that you hand out hang out with him <laughs> like oh, okay maybe but i want to hang out with ryuji <laughs> Yeah, it's like yeah, I want but... to ramen with him. Yeah, yeah, it's like I want to go and play darts with people, and not do this crap. Um, but no, it's cool, interesting. Cool trick shots. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, Akechi does feel like a new character in a way. Huh. You do. You get a lot of, because now he has eight. So he has ten social link stats. He obviously he is confidant line actually does let you learn a lot more about him in a way mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting it's yeah it's it's and it's also i can say it's a lot less suspicious of him coming to you at the at the train station and going hey let's have a quick conversation real quick it's a lot less suspicious now that you're actually hanging out with him and trying to be in a bit of a frenemy with him yeah it makes more sense for him just instead of just him randomly walking up to you and going hey let me answer you ask you a question about the phantom thieves real quick because yeah in the original he his leveled up organically right just throughout the story yeah just happened story throughout the story yeah. yeah no skills either yeah he has skills now as well which are quite nice oh. like the so first half of his team. social pardon is he on your team no no okay no okay. um <laughs> Akechi and this new girl, which what's her name? Kasumi. God, I'm gonna keep forgetting the name. Come on, uh, Akechi and Kasumi are the two characters that aren't playable that start their social links early now. Okay. Mm. So you start getting non-team based social like rewards now, and then I assume later you'll just get all their stuff when they become play quote unquote playable. All mm-hmm. of the stuff. All the stuff. So- so Akechi's is very much based on battle technique and battle style, and you're able to see like percent- the enemy's abilities and stuff like that with his kind of persona. And then Kasumi's is very much about health and uh, acrobatics and evasion. So mm. it's useful. So they're both useful. Well, but nice. it's interesting having that. But then again, it's like you've added Akechi and this Kasumi girl and this counselor girl who all... This counselor girl, this counselor guy. <laughs> that, um <laughs> all have these really long social links. It's like adding another 30, like, meetups on top of the already God knows how many confidants, and it's very hard to manage it all. Well, at it's least they gave you more time. They have, but it's it's valid for them giving you more time because it's still, like, a cluster of, I don't know what to do here. Be interesting. We'll see how it goes. Um, it very much, I'm starting to get the realisation of what kind of like game this is you know it is very much it is persona 5 plus it is let's <laughs> fix everything wrong with the game and then let's add stuff that we wanted to add that we probably didn't have time for or let's add new confidence or whatever let's extend the story i'm mm-hmm. sure there is a big chunk of content at the end that is new but in terms of the the main game that you already played before it very much is a persona 5 plus okay i can't fault it for that 
Yeah. The combat is incredible. Like, honestly, I could... I was saying this to a couple of friends earlier. I don't think I could very easily go back to Persona 5 now. <laughs> Not because of the story or the confidence or anything that, like, making a major impact. It's just the fact that the ease of access of just having Baton Pass instantly and having these new, like, Battle Pass le- Baton Pass levels and having all these new abilities open up to you so early and just exploring it. These, there's the new, these new combat moves called uh, Showtime moves, which I forgot to mention, Dude. which have recently appeared. <laughs> that, that's how I feel about going back to Persona 4. Like, all the quality of life dungeon crawling aspects of P5, like the sneaking around and being able to easily ambush enemies... Mm-hmm. That's not there in P4. Yeah, and like you just the personas have you got the were also kind of random. Yeah, you just you just have to swing at the enemy and hope that you connect with them, and maybe you'll get the advantage. Maybe you won't get enemy advantage. It's mm-hmm. P4 doesn't really have good dungeon movement after playing five. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's yeah it. It very much it is extremely polished. Mm-hmm. Like honestly, I haven't seen a single problem with the game. I haven't seen there's nothing that I've been like. There's there's always parts of Persona Five where I'm like, ah, oh, that's a bit clunky, or I can see why they did that, but I don't know if it, it's they've kind of taken all those kinks out of it, mm-hmm. and it really does work well now. Like it's the best version of the game. If you haven't played Persona Five, play Royal. Yeah. Unless you already own Persona Five, I don't don't go out and buy another copy necessarily. <laughs> unless you really um, want to. Unless you really want to, or if you're like replaying, if you're ever like, hey, I want to, yeah, and then be like, I'll play. If you're like, it hey, I want to, yeah. If you're like, hey, I want to replay Persona Five, and you don't mind, buy, like, hey, I don't mind paying, like, if it's on sale or something, you're like, hey, I don't mind paying that to play it again and to get all the new features. Then yeah, it's worth it. It's great, but so far in terms of actual story not much is changing there are slight deviations and slight plot changes in the small way but nothing massive so far Mm -hmm. we'll see (laughs) we will see so um hunter what's up let's wrap up (laughs) this podcast with you talking about some games that you've been playing that you said that we could use if we are running short on time all right (laughs) so in between you know doom and frezzy final fantasy no i've gotten a few other games just notched here and there played this one called sayonara wild hearts which i've been meaning to play that game it's it's a rhythm game and it's like you're familiar with the idea of a concept album right I am. But yeah. For those who are armed, go for it. Basically, it's like a album of music that you know each song feeds into a story, and the other song yeah. builds off of it. Basically, the Sayonara Wild Hearts is like that, except it's like you know an EP rather than an album, but with like visuals and cool stuff to go with it. And the it video really games cool. it. Yeah. So yeah, it's a game cool. I really wanted to play because. Just the art style. I love rhythm games. I always have a soft spot for rhythm games, but um, just the the art style of that game. When I saw it, I'm like, oh, I really need to play that. Yeah. And then it came out, and it came out at, like kind of a wrong time because there was a load of other stuff. And I was like, I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it. And I still haven't got back to it. So, so I played I, that. It started with uh, a modern version of like Claire de Lune, so that got my attention. <laughs> so that was cool. After that in between big releases i played my friend pedro which is this <laughs> really cool 2d action shooter basically it's a score yeah. attack game with like slow motion mechanics and the goal is to rack up your score by doing stuff that's really cool nice yeah i've seen it yeah i haven't played it hi it's hi. Hi. Volver, isn't it uh yeah it's well, published, published by the yeah. I don't know who exactly made it, but that game would do... The people who developed that game would do really well with the Deadpool license, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> like, that would be sick. Hey, Switch the kick games. button to a sword button, and you've got to go it there. That game was nice, and like it only took me like five hours to beat. It was real cool. I never felt like the levels dragged at all. They kept escalating things like perfectly. Like every time I got used to the mechanics that they were introducing to me, they'd sh- they'd give me a new weapon or they'd be like, oh, hey, use this skateboard to like traverse this part of the level and shoot people in slow motion. <laughs> it was real cool nice. that way. Cool. Cool, cool. Anything else or is that it? Um, 
I'd been doing the B sides and Celeste too. Oh. Yeah. Are they are they as challenging as I thought they would be? Because... Uh, they're pretty challenging. You see, I had to when I towards the end of last year, I played the game again when I got the uh, physical copy that I ordered, and uh, I got the DLC with it. It came with it, and oh, nice. The DLC kind of locks the second half of it behind the uh, completing the B-sides. So I was just kind of going through it in the weekend. And I was like, man, I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> so I just turned on the assist mode and skipped through them to be able to finish the uh, DLC. I turned the nice. assist back off when I you know, went back to doing the DLC level. But So because I feel like it would be um, rude to not eventually do those after you know cheating through them i've been doing that i believe the last one i did was chapter five but yeah yeah i really liked celeste when i, I played celeste in like one sitting that was my thing with celeste was i just played the entire game from start to finish just in one go I, one night i did it in two and yeah i only really got interrupted because my friend wanted to hang out <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, this is great. I love uh -huh, the good old days. I yeah. love Celeste too. It's one of my favorite games that I've played in the past several years." Yeah, I loved it. And then it's like, "Hey, do you want to do these harder bits?" I'm like, "Nah, that's when I'm, I'm gonna sign out." <laughs> you okay, see, good job. It manages to still feel like you've accomplished something every time you make it past the screen. I feel really good every time it happens. I enjoy. How that pans yeah, out. Yeah, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was. I don't necessarily have anything against a difficult platform or anything like that. Like I, d I didn't find the like Celeste that bad. Really, I enjoyed what I played of it. I didn't get angry at any point. But I was just like, eh. Oh, that's the crazy. I enjoyed thing. my one sitting. That game is hard, but it's real nice to you about how hard it's being. It was never like frustrating to me at all. Hmm. Yeah, I yeah. It's a it's a good platform. You should pick it up if you haven't played it and you not like two D platformers. Not to mention, of all the places I'd find a really cool story, I didn't think it'd be in a two D platformer. <laughs> but here we are. Celeste is like one of my favorites because of that. There's been some really good two D platformers recently. Yeah. So if you are a two D platformer, some great games like that. And um ukulele and the possible uh should check that one out too if you like two D platformers. I always shout that one out because i'm like hey it's really great please ignore the first one the first one was bad but the second one's really good yeah, trust me it's yeah. like it's like 2d zelda meets a 2d platformer and it's great interesting it's really great you should play it and it's on everything like honestly i'm like I, they did some really that they, they their whole design like philosophy behind that game was great because they were like hey we're gonna make this for switch and we're gonna make sure that this runs at 60 fps on switch and then we're gonna build onto the ps4 and xbox and pc after that so that we know that the switch one runs as good as the rest of them I'm like hey that's a good oh, good nice. idea and i appreciate that i mean i still played it on ps4 but you know i appreciate <laughs> it and i'm sure it's great on switch as well well other than that i don't think we have anything else to talk about because there's no news no nah, gaming's nope. dead no yeah <laughs> rip <laughs> Poor one. Gaming's dead. Mr. Poor one Mr. PlayStation has passed away, dude. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> no. PlayStation is gone. But Uncle Nintendo, Nintendo no. has gone into a cave, dude. Yeah, he's all he's given us is a direct mini this year, and he's like, goodbye. <laughs> Hope you like Xenoblade. If not, then you're getting nothing. I do. Uh, Tell me when No do. More Heroes is coming. Oh I my god, No More you. Heroes. Breath of the Wild 2 can't hear you. I'm off. Oh, man. Too busy. We'll find out one day. Scoot is too busy watching movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, did you ever play Travis Strikes Again? From... I did not. Oh, I was wondering I... if you had, because I was wondering if it was any good. Oh, see, I've only actually played No More Heroes 2. Ah. But I oh, love No More Heroes. One? No, I didn't play oh, one. Fake fan. Dude, fake? <laughs> there's this really good bit at the start of no more heroes 2 where travis is just like so are you gonna fill in everyone about what happened in the first game and sylvia is just like why would anyone go to the second game first there's no reason to talk about this and i'm like oh. eh. <laughs> but, I, uh, like, but wait a minute <laughs> like but i just uh. i like the little nods to the camera yeah. that no more heroes does they do it in a nice fashion i love no more heroes it's yeah. so fun Man, I wish I, I still I had my Wii to pick them both up again. 
Dude, No More Heroes really 2 is a really short good. game. What? No More Heroes 2 was really short. Like, yeah, they streamlined a whole lot of stuff. Like, the first game had, like, an open world almost. Like, you could go yeah. from place to place. It streamlined then, that in 2, where you could just kind of select the levels. Yeah, second game's just, like, mission-based. It's really... It's really nice. It's, I like, preferred it's game it that way, because, honestly, you know, yeah. the sooner I could get to the bosses, the better. Yeah. There, yeah. And there wasn't any having to do jobs to pay for your entry fee to the bosses yeah oh, God. yeah yeah that was a thing in the first game it was yeah. Not i my think that's scorpion what put, hunting i think that's what put me off wanting to play the first game that enforced motion controls uh, oh yeah. god second Stop game it. second game lets you use a classic controller so that's oh, big big appreciation in my book Dude, it's great. I, I think I played it with the motion controls because I didn't know about that. I don't remember. Oh. I mean, the, nice. the motion controls in the first or in those games felt... They made sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. One of the best uses of them as far as I remember. But no, no, more Heroes, no More Heroes 2 is a really short game, honestly. Like, yeah. it's very much a game you can just bust out in an afternoon if you know what you're doing. I mean, a lot well, of games, you know what you're doing. Like, hack and slash games tend to be that way. Yeah, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like, no, no, no. more heroes two has a really good story behind it for how short yeah, it yeah. is. So, Bayonetta one and two are kind of similar in that regard. The yeah, Devil's yeah. Cry games are similar cry. as well. Like mm -hmm. my average run through of the first game these days is like three and a half. Yeah, like I busted through Virgil's story after knowing what I was doing in like a couple hours. Yeah, like four or five hours maybe. You see, they're designed around being replayed several times, yeah. so that's why they make them, you know, mercifully short in some regards. Yeah, like they being, just feel longer because of, of how many times you're dying. Yeah, being, uh, you know, 40 hours and then asking you to play it six times would be a bit yeah. much. It's like, okay, go through 40 hours on this brutal fucking difficulty yeah. called Dante Must Die. Oh, it's my favorite. <laughs> Nice. Oh, I'm so it's scared nice. to try that. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta go through hard mode first. I think by the time the, I think the way that the difficulties in uh, three works is you'll get hard, then very hard. And thankfully with very hard, I think you'll unlock Super Dante and or Super Virgil, so you'll have like infinite <laughs> devil trigger if you want it. Ooh. Yeah. So that, that makes life nice. significantly easier in three because in one and four and five you need to beat Dante Must Die to get the infinite devil trigger. Oh fuck! Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like your uh, uh, reward for beating the hardest difficulty as opposed to for whatever reason in Working three you up to the hardest difficulty. Yeah. I think it was because of how the way that the difficulties got mucked around for America, yeah, probably that very hard i don't think was a thing in the japanese version at all and they just kind of <laughs> inserted it there for the western special edition hmm. <laughs> i could be wrong i might be talking out my bum here but who knows uh no yeah no one's gonna correct you it's all good we're right you're sure i'm sure you're right what are they gonna do give us a bad review what are they gonna do? Oh, Listen to fifty-three minutes into this dumpster fire of <laughs> podcasting. It started out so chaotically. We probably, you know, we're probably honestly the, the the first ten minutes were probably some of the most chaotic uh, minutes on a podcast where we literally managed to somehow talk about everything and nothing at the exact same time. That's pretty great. Yeah, it's like a Kojima interview. Uh, well, you know. It's the best review we could get. Leave that as a review on our iTunes, please. Make sure it's five <laughs> like stars. Like a Kojima interview. <laughs> I mean, I'd like a Kojima interview. I'd take it. Honestly, would take it. But this has been Hot Gamers Only, the show where we talk about the hot topics in games. Not this week, but most of the time we do. To be fair, um, there's no hot topics anymore. <laughs> there's no hot topics. Hot uh, topic Hunter, is where closed. can people find you? <laughs> God damn it, Kyle. Hunter, where can people find you? Uh, uh, YouTube.com slash ReaperHunter23. Well, get you one, one day, I'll say that. You'll do it. You'll just do it straight away, dude. It'll be great. But, I almost said ReaperHunter23.com slash YouTube. <laughs> Try that. See if that works as well. Kyle, where can people find you? You find me on Twitter at KDavisSRL and also on Twitch, twitch.tv slash KDavisSRL. For Crash Tuesday. Nice. 
Heck yeah. Crash two Tuesdays. Crash Tuesdays. Crash two Tuesdays, dude. Every day that isn't a Tuesday is Crash two Tuesday. Remember that, guys. Don't forget. Um, if you Don't want to find me, you me. can find me everywhere. You can find me everywhere. You can find me on Twitter uh, and YouTube. Just look for Water James on Twitter and YouTube. Well, underscore on Twitter. Oh, well. We'll get there one day. Um, but yeah, this has been Hot Games Only. Uh, you can catch this uh, podcast every week at 5 p.m. UK time, 12 p.m. Eastern on youtube spotify itunes google play soundcloud i don't know where else we can put it at this point so please just listen to it somewhere (laughs) Uh, and we'd really appreciate it um but on that note i think we're done i think we're good uh we hope you enjoyed this uh clusterfuck of a podcast this week (laughs) hopefully next week we'll have a bit more structure um, probably not next week we'll probably not next week we'll probably be talking about final impressions for hunter on final fantasy 7 we'll probably be talking about uh hopefully i've been done more than one palace on persona by next week if i haven't i'm honestly going to be so disappointed in myself it's unreal um and then we'll figure out something else to talk about hopefully there'll be some news hopefully xbox does something interesting or nintendo it's not going to be sony nope um <laughs> If they do, it'll be on a random Wednesday and we'll all never see it. Um, but yeah. Turns out the That's V-shaped all... design is what we're getting. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out the, 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 the PlayStation 5 box is a V. It, it is a V. And it's going to be great. And it takes off every time you play the latest Rockstar game. It'll be incredible. Anyway, we've rammed on enough. Uh, until next time, it's been a pleasure. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. See ya.